Hi everyone, Julia Usher from Recipes for a Sweet Life. Easter is almost here, so naturally I've got an Easter cookie for you today. It makes use of my new Dynamic Duo stencil sets. If you're not familiar with what those are, I launched them a few months ago and they're basically replacing my Prettier Plaques series for the time being. Like the Prettier Plaques, they allow you to do beautiful message cookies. However, unlike the Prettier Plaques, they have twice as much of everything. So you're gonna get twice as many backgrounds, twice as many messages, twice as many frames, which means you've basically got a limitless array of design possibilities. In this video, I'm gonna show you several of those design possibilities, not all of them, but many of them. As well, I'm gonna show you a dimensional royal icing transfer technique that employs stenciling and airbrushing using the same set that'll allow us to create a pretty little egg to place on top of this cookie. So let's talk about what we'll need for this project. Basically, you'll need both of my Egg Hunt Dynamic Duo sets. There are two. The first is the background foreground set, which consists of, let me just pull it out here, a gorgeous floral background, grass and clover, onto which you can superimpose two foreground elements, in this case, eggs and a bunny. If you recall from my earlier heart video, I had one foreground element. In this case, we've got two foreground elements. You've got even a little extra in this pack. In order to lay the bunny and eggs on the background, though, you'll need some masking elements to mask off that background, namely eggs and a bunny. So those make up the third and fourth pieces in this set. And then, of course, you'll have a shading piece, which is just the negative stencil left after cutting out the mask. And this is used for optionally putting shading around the eggs or the bunny. And I'll probably use it certainly on the bunny in this particular case to fill in the center part of the rabbit. You'll see that in the next step. So that's set number one. You can use that set in isolation without the messages on its own. Likewise, you can use the messages without any of those backgrounds. So they work fully separately and also fully together. Now in the message set, you've got, of course, messages. But as I said, you've got actually more than twice as many. You've got four times the amount of messages here as I've got in my prettier plaque set. So again, more versatility. You've got two different frames to contain those messages. To mark out areas to place the messages on backgrounds, for instance, you've got the corresponding masking pieces to those frames. And then lastly, you've got the optional shading piece, which is the negative piece, again, left over after the masks are cut out. And this is for providing shading around the message areas. One other tool that I recently introduced that works super well with these duo sets is the quadrant masking tool. I'll be using this throughout. And this is a great tool for isolating, for instance, the messages on that message piece so that you don't get overspray into adjacent areas. So different types of masks, this is sold separately. You'll also need a couple of cookies. I'm going to be doing one with just the background and foreground pieces so you can see how that set works in isolation. And then I'll be doing a bigger one, either this or a large Easter egg showing how all the elements work together. For stenciling to hold stencils in place, you need a stencil genie or stencil frame. Oftentimes, I also weight the smaller masks and things down with magnets or small weights. Sometimes the corners of the genie I additionally weight with wooden blocks. We'll be airbrushing this project entirely. These stencils do work well with both airbrush coloring and royal icing. If you're using royal icing and doing a layered effect though, however, just remember to put royal icing down in the last step so that all successive stencils lay flat against the cookie. But I am just working with airbrush colorings today, except for some accent pieces that may go down later. And this is a five color project with a little bit of white to tone down the blue that we'll be using on the Easter eggs. Now for that dimensional Easter egg element, you'll need an acetate setup. I've got a little template of Easter eggs and I'll show you how I created that later with a piece of acetate over it, all taped onto a cookie sheet or you could use a cardboard. It just needs a little bit of support underneath it and we'll be using that to create the dimensional eggs that go on top and which you can see floating overhead. In addition, I've got a couple of optional icing colors. I may use some greens, royal icing to create dimensional grass and also a darker color to create a border on the cookie. And of course, to be spraying the background colors on, I'll be working with my airbrush and I'll also be using it to spray on top of the eggs once they're complete. So let me clear this away. We're gonna start first with working with the background and foreground set to show how that set works in isolation just beautifully to create cookies similar to those you see in the foreground. 
got a ton of design possibilities with just the background set. You could put the eggs in front of the clover and grass, as I've done here. Or you could use the other foreground element, which is the bunny, and put him in front, which looks perfectly charming. Or if you've got a big enough cookie, you can fit both foreground elements on it, as I have done here on this white cookie. It's actually only four inches across, so it's not that big, but it looks just great. I think I'm going to do a small version as demonstration, but perhaps a bunny will fit on top as well. We'll see. The first step is actually anchoring your background stencil in a stencil frame or stencil genie to keep it entirely flat against the cookie. The next you want to position your masks wherever you want those foreground elements to go and then weight them down. I'm using small magnets, but any small weights will do. Yeah, I'm going to lose that bunny and just do the eggs. Now if any parts of the stencil are still lifting despite the genie, you'll want to hold them down with the tip of your trussing needle or a scribe tool while you're stenciling to keep that stencil completely flat. Anywhere the stencil lifts is an area for coloring to go underneath and create a blurry pattern. I'm working with two purples for the clover and then two greens in the leaves and the technique is to work relatively close to the cookie with relatively low flow at a 90 degree angle to the cookie. Low flow so that no coloring accumulates on top and seeps underneath. We don't want that. And that looks perfectly good. You can see I've got a void there for the eggs where the mask was and I'm just going to slip the next stencil in place, line it up with that void. I'm not working with the genie here because the eggs come very close to the bottom of the cookie and the stencil frame would probably hit the cookie and prevent that stencil from lying flat. So laying the stencils directly on the cookie is perfectly all right. I'm using my quadrant masking tool to the right to mask off the bunny because we don't want to spray him. And I think I'm going to put another little magnet here in the corner just to keep that stencil perfectly flat. Coming in with a fifth color which is sky blue for the eggs. Again spraying close range at a 90 degree angle to prevent underspray very focused purple stripes here. And that looks beautiful. So just with the background set alone, you can create a very cohesive project and in fact, many different designs. So let's see both of the sets in action, both the message and frame set and the background set we used before. The first step is exactly the same. Just lay that background stencil, the clover and grass as flat against the cookie as possible. I won't be able to use the stencil genie here though because it's too small to fit over the five inch cookie I've got. I'm using a pretty big cookie to get all the elements on top. I'm using three masking pieces now, the message mask at the very top and the bunny and egg as I used before. The message mask obviously is from the message and frame set. Using the same four colors, I'll have them all listed in the video description and just touching down with my trussing needle as needed to keep that stencil flat, spraying at a 90 degree angle to prevent underspray just as before. Ta-da! Actually that doesn't look like much right now but I assure you it will once I lay in the details of the bunny and eggs. Now I didn't use this optional shading piece before when I did the last cookie. I could have but I hadn't done the bunny. I think the bunny looks great though with some shadow of color in him so I'm going to use it here and just mask off with the quadrant masking tool the eggs because I don't want any color in them at this point. And I think I'm going to use a light purple just to create a halo or shadow around the bunny. Spraying at a distance with relatively low flow so I don't get too much coloring there. This is just going to be a suggestion of color. And that looks terrific. Now I'm ready to lay in the detail of the bunny. So I'm bringing back the bunny stencil from the background set. This is a foreground stencil from the background set. Not to confuse you. All of the packaging has these elements clearly labeled, so no worries there. I'm going to mask off the eggs again because I don't want any coloring in them quite yet. And I'm going to use brown here to get all these details. Again, close range work at a 90 degree angle. Now that looks great. I'm ready to move on to the eggs now. Same process as before, just laying the eggs into the area left by the masking piece and then masking off with my quadrant tool anything that I don't want to get color on and weighting everything down as close to the stencil openings as possible to keep everything completely flat. I might even tape this here. And I'm going to use the same two colors as before, the sky blue and the regal purple I think it is for the stripes. Holding down with my trussing needle here because it's lifting near the edge. Ta-da! Now on to the message area at the top. Here I am going to use the shading piece from the message and frame set corresponding to that shape. 
I do want a halo of color around the message, and I think I'm going to use blue this time instead of purple. Again, masking off all the areas that I don't want to get color on, so I'm bringing in a second quadrant mask, but paper or paper towel would work just fine as well if you don't have those masking pieces. Wonderful. Now on to the frame. Again, part of the message and frame set naturally. I think I'm going to do this in brown from here on out. Again, weighing down those masks as close to the area I'm stenciling as possible. Now these are really tiny openings. I prefer to get a very fine amount of coloring down and doing multiple repetitions of color until I get it the darkness I want, as opposed to laying a lot of coloring down fast and quickly at one time. This way I'll get less accumulation of coloring, wet coloring on top that could seep underneath. So again, gradual application of coloring is generally better, especially with small openings. Now that looks terrific. Now onto the message stencil, also naturally part of the message and frame set, spraying in a 90 degree angle very close to the cookie and gradually. And that looks terrific. I did, however, get a little bit of underspray up here at the top where I hadn't properly masked off, but the good news is I think I can conceal it with what I'm going to do next. I'm going to put a shadow of dark green, the avocado green, all the way around the edge. This highlights the edge of the egg, but also will hide that error. Again, spraying at a distance because I don't want too much heavy color on the cookie. So that kind of conceals that area. In the final construction, as you'll see in the image flying overhead, I've got some additional piped grass and some dimensional eggs, and I can probably put a little bit of grass there to cover that area as well. Now on to the dimensional egg. So now I want to show you a little something extra, these dimensional eggs, which just add some interest to the cookie. And conveniently, they use all the same things we've already used, namely the egg stencil from the background set and all the same airbrush colorings. We're going to be starting by making royal icing transfers, which are royal icing piped onto acetate or parchment, dried, then peeled off and then decorated and placed directly on the cookie. That's why they're called transfers. They're piped onto something and then removed. We'll be piping onto acetate, but we need to create a piping template as a tracing guide first. And I'm going to do that by simply laying the egg stencil on a piece of paper and stenciling over it. Any color will do here. And I just need one egg as a guide, so I'm just going to be stenciling the center egg here and getting as many as I possibly can on a sheet of paper. This will be my piping guide. We'll slip that under the acetate and pipe directly on the acetate. You could also pipe on parchment paper. However, I find that parchment paper buckles more as the icing dries. Acetate will stay flatter and therefore the icing or the egg itself will stay flatter as well. Now for the icing, I like to use royal icing of a relatively thick flooding consistency so it has some body and just plops off the spoon. This will lead to a puffier egg with more shape. The key here, though, is to pipe within the boundary, not to overflow it, because if you overflow it, it gets too big. The stencil won't wrap all the way around the egg, and you won't get coloring all the way around the egg. Knock down any peaks with your trussing needle, and of course, fill out the entire tray. Let them dry until completely dry all the way through. Typically, that's overnight. Now, you want to leave the eggs on the acetate throughout the stenciling process so they don't slide around, and then simply lay the stencil on top and proceed as we did on the cookie itself, weighting it down and spraying at a 90 degree angle to the egg. Again, it's important to have that egg be smaller than the stencil so that you get coloring all the way around the egg. Now this one was done with yellow and purple, it looks a little yellow and brown, so choose your colors wisely. Blue and purple tend to bleed together less and show up more true to their original colors. Now let's make these cookies even more beautiful by adding some embellishments like the eggs we just made and some borders. Here I'm using icing of beadwork consistency that forms a nice round bead on its own. For all of my consistency adjustments in the recipe, please see the links in the video description. This is the cookie I did first in the video with just the background set and I think it looks beautiful with just a simple border. However, I'm going to jazz it up with one of the eggs we just made. Once the egg is dried and completely airbrushed is the time to remove it from the acetate, like so. And I'm simply going to anchor it with a little bit of thick royal icing. Typically I work with white because if I make a mistake it's easier to clean it off the cookie. And just plop it onto the icing. I'd avoid touching the top, particularly if you just airbrushed it, as you could leave a smudge on the egg itself in the coloring. But that looks beautiful.
And here's another version with yellow eggs, looking lovely. Let's move on to the big egg, though. Here I think I'm going to use two small eggs in the foreground. One as if the bunny is holding it, and another in the patch to the right. And for more elevation this time, I'm actually going to anchor them with a little bit of icing, then a blob of fondant, and then some icing on top to secure it to the egg. And this will just give it a little more height and interest. Doing the same thing now on the other side. I could have used eggs of different colors, but I think having all blue and purple here keeps this rather harmonized. Now I want to move on to a border. I definitely want to conceal that airbrushing blob at the top. I'm going to be doing some leaves and grass using two colors of icing, relatively thick, in a dual chamber bag. And I'm using a number 349 leaf tip here to make some big long blades of grass as well as some shorter leaves. To make the shorter leaves, the motion is simply pushing in to create a bead, pulling back and releasing pressure to create the point. So again, push in, pull back and release pressure to create a point. Now I need to come around the top to cover that airbrushing mistake. I'm going to use a big long blade here, gradually releasing pressure at the end. And I think that's just going to finish this off quite beautifully. Last leaf, and there she is, so sweet for Easter. I'm particularly enamored with the dimensionality that comes with the added royal icing egg transfers, but if you don't have the time or the interest, you don't need to go the extra mile. That's the beauty of my dynamic duo sets. They actually lend incredible versatility. You can go from very simple to very elaborate. Just as a recap, this is really elaborate. It uses both sets, both the message and frame set, and the, both foreground elements in the background and foreground set. This is about four and a half inches across. Of course, I needed a pretty big cookie to accommodate that. That's true with this set, not true with all of the sets. If you want something simpler and smaller, then stick with one set, as I did in this case, the background and the egg foreground from the one set. I did add the extra royalizing egg, however. And you'll see many other possibilities scrolling overhead. You could instead put the bunny in front Still using one set, you could use two sets, but use the clover in the background with the message from the other set and leave it simple that way. So again, I encourage you just to explore and get creative, have fun with these sets. I hope you enjoy them as much as I love designing them for you. Till next video, live sweetly and have a great Easter.